Good evening, everybody. Welcome along to the history program with me, uh, Tony Brown, the Limerick Historical Society. And uh, we're on a course because you can find us on YouTube. Or as of now, I presume most of the old um, programs we did are on the Limerick Historical Society website if you want to go to that. And this one should be up by about um, 11 o'clock tonight, we hope. These programs, of course, are not live, they're recorded, but then they're put up on the, on the website. So you can use Google's ways of finding us. Don't forget to click on our subscribe button, which is on the bottom right, right hand corner of the screen. Just click on uh, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but it gives us a boost in numbers so we find out how many people are kind of watching us. So we're not kind of talking to ourselves here, you know. We want to know if anyone is live out there. Anyway, to get on to tonight's program, and as usual, uh, with me, um, uh, Tom Donovan. Tom, you're welcome along to the program anyway. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, Tony. And tonight we got another, uh, uh, should I say, victim or somebody interested. We got tonight, we got uh, Martin O'Brien. Martin, you're welcome to the programme. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tom. Now, um, tonight we want to talk about a book Martin has written on uh, James Boucher. Um, an interesting character. And uh, I should say before we, before we get into the programme proper, about, just to tell you, about uh, <laughs> nine years ago, maybe ten years ago, I got. Um, I heard this this man talking on, on RTE about Boucher, and uh, I said he'd make an interesting uh, subject for a lecture. And uh, his name was Seamus Martin. Seamus was uh, the Irish Times correspondent uh, in Russia and all these states like Latvia, Lithuania, and all those. And um, I got in touch with him anyway to come down to give a talk uh, about ten years ago on Boucher. And there's a little, very little known about Boucher, who he was or where he was. And uh, I was intrigued by him at the time. And uh, Seamus, it turned out to be a brother of the bishop, uh, the archbishop, as you call him in Dublin, uh, Diarmuid Martin. He was his brother. And I met Diarmuid Martin about three years ago. He was going to talk about the sinking church. And uh, I asked him, I just said to him, how oh, Seamus? And he looked at me when I said, how oh, Seamus? He said, my brother, he said, yes, he said, he's fine. That was about two years ago. So I presume he's still above, he's still above ground anyway. We want to tell you about this program when we get it finished. But anyway, Martin, should I start by, by saying, first of all, what got you interested in, in Boucher? Well, I, I'm interested in Limerick history full stop. And uh, I have kind of short bios on 600 or more people from Limerick of note. But I had never heard of him. And how I got into it was I decided to collect all of the stamps with a limerick interest. And um, in research for that, I came across the name Boucher as the first Irish person to appear on a foreign stamp. And uh, then I discovered he was from Limerick. And I started to do a bit of research on him. Like there were, it's about 40 or so stamps of Limerick interest. You know, there are some sporting like McMackie, Paul O'Connell and those, and you have the Richard Harrison and a few historical ones as Mary I and uh, the sieges of Limerick there around the Treaty 300. There was a, lot, a couple of stamps issued. There aren't an awful lot, but, but there are a few. And um, so I started doing the research and I actually have obtained all of the stamps. There were three uh, sets of stamps issued for Boucher. The first was in 1921. That would have been one year after he died. He died in 1920. And um, there's 15 million stamps issued. There were nine in the series. Yeah. So it was, um, it was the stamp in Bulgaria. And there was another lot issued in 1939. There were floods uh, in two parts of Bulgaria. And unusually, the stamp is the original stamp with an overprint on it. So if you, if you think of a, a carton stamp being, say, one euro, and you reissue that in 10 years' time or whatever, it's now a two euro stamp. So there were two on it. You know, the one is down the corner as it would have been, but there's now a two overprint on it. And then there's a plus. And the plus was the money that would be donated to those regions. It was very, I have never seen that before. That happened, no, that happened here with stamps in the 19, uh, what years of time again we're talking about? When the, the new government took over, do you remember they had a, sta a stamp tam that is written over it? Yeah. Uh, Sadir sta was stamped over some Sadir, of the old yeah. stamps. Yeah. Right across it. <laughs> and I remember my brother saying, collecting stamps now, and this stamp, like as you said, written over it. 
about the Republic of Ireland. Oh, it yeah. was after, that's right, it was after we became a republic. Yeah. That was in 1940-something, wasn't it? It was in 40, 48 or 47. Yeah, that's when yeah, the was done, yeah. you know. And but the stamps the, the, the come out. The collection of the money for the floods was unusual. You know, there, there's a plus mm -hmm. on it. So it might be a plus. Lev was their uh, unit of currency. And um, that plus went to these regions, which is very mm -hmm. unusual. On a so, so we have raised last year as well. It's a way of raising taxation in a way. So it's kind of it was like a tax. It probably possibly yeah. was, but 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 yeah. uh, I I don't know were they the only stamps you could get, Tom? You know, or or mm. were there other stamps that also that would have been a yeah. direct value? I I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Where was Boucher? Where was she born in Ireland? She was born really? in in Bagistown. Um, you, you know the rugby club in Broth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah. If you go up to the rugby club and you take a right turn, that would be taking you down to Knockaney. Yeah. On the left hand side, not too far down that road, is a, is a white house. Step back a little bit from the road. And that was the Boucher family home. So they lived in that up to the 30s. Uh, it, was, it became owned by the Land Commission at that point. And uh, Tom Mitchell went in there. He was mm. a Fine Gael. Um, uh, Councillor. Councillor, yeah, yeah. And also, when uh, he must be related to the to, to Boucher's of um, Boucher's Castle, because there are different ways of spelling the name. B O U C H E R, B O U C H I E R. Yeah, he he is B O U R C H I E R, which yeah. I, I'm sure originally they came from Normandy, so it would be Boucher, I'm sure, yeah, in France. Yeah. But in mm. Ireland, they are called Boucher. Mm. And there's just other spellings, uh, B-O-U-R-C-H-E-R is in Limerick as well, mm. but he's I-E-R. And then in Bulgaria, it's Boucher as well. So that's the, the way it's pronounced uh, in, in both Ireland and in Bulgaria. Yeah. But uh, he, um, he, lived, he lived there for a while and then he went to school. So he was off to school for the most part. He went to Portora. Up in Enniskillen, where a lot of people but, went. Oh, Jackie, don't watch his name went there. And yes, but why he went to Portola? I did. A few of them went there. Yeah. Well, the uh, went people. Yeah. Well, I, 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 you know, I presume that was where they went. But they did go there. Then he went to Trinity, and then he went to Cambridge, mm. and then he got a job teaching in uh, Eton. But he was pretty much deaf. He was <laughs> he had a severe deafness. So being a teacher and being deaf, I'd say, was not. Yeah, uh, not too good a <laughs> setup, you know. So he didn't last that long at it. The pupils probably loved that. That time, would you agree? If he was, if, the pupils oh, yeah, probably yeah. loved that if he was with death. It would help him as well. It would help him as well. They would be commenting. <laughs> but, uh, but but were his parents farmers? No, his, his father uh, was a justice uh, of the peace, and, and um, so they, they were wealthy enough. Uh, they had um, mm. the, the Boucher family originally when they came here had about 850 acres, but it had reduced quite a bit by the time uh, James David was about, like, but mm -hmm. they, originally that's what they got. Yeah. They, they were listed in, uh, in the land grants, Tom, um, the first land grants they listed as having a lot of land around Locko, the general yeah. area. Yeah. And Boucher was, um, the, 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 the old castle was always, always known as Boucher's Castle. Mm. Yeah, it's the same spelling, Tom, but but they are, are uh, Tony, it's the same spelling, but they are a different branch of the family. Are they? They are, yes. Yeah, even though they were quite close there. Yeah. Mm. Just, sometimes families stem they're not related, but they, they are and they probably send me rose over something. <laughs> the kind of well I know it's the kind of fall out, you know, and to <laughs> pretend I, I got a <laughs> trouble one them over telling the girl she was related to another people to other people in her village. She said she wasn't, and I knew she was. You know. Sometimes you have to back off when you find out. Rose over money and rose over who to marry and that, you know. But like, it must, they must have been related somewhere because both just had a lot of land around, as I said, Lacko, that generally had gone over those bluffs. They had. And it, it had, had, it had 850 down. acres originally, but it had whittled down over the years. Yeah. But and what, did he, had, he si had he siblings, Martin? Uh, no, he never married. Oh, sorry, siblings, no. yes. Yeah. Sorry, he had four brothers and one sister. Mm. Now, if you go out that road and pass the house, maybe three or four fields beyond the house, it's a white house, it's quite noticeable. There's yeah. a headstone in the field. 
and it's about your headstone. Oh, yeah. It's illegible. And he, one of his uh, brothers was uh, a John, and he must have died early. And that must be him, because I have only found details of his birth, not his death. Yeah. So I think that's his headstone yeah. there, right? Yeah. Yeah. A few yeah. of the others are, are buried in Knockaney Cemetery. And what did the others do? Well, one of them was a, a bishop, and um, he was our, yeah. uh, Bishop of Clonmel. Uh, another guy was in the Royal Navy, and he had a bit of a tragedy. He had, they had only one son, and uh, he was in the Navy also, and he committed suicide in Hong Kong in the cabin of the ship he was on. Mm. So, and he was, he was their only son. We're getting back to <laughs> the original man, yeah. What got, what got him involved in with their farm? Because places like Latvia, Lithuania, they were another world away. In the, we're talking about what years, the 1830s? He was born in 1850, but he didn't go out there until about 1888. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, and was, did, he go to, in, did he go straight to Sofia or was he other, other places? Well, what happened was he um, went on a bit of a tour around and he wound up in Vienna. Yeah. And he had a letter of introduction to the British ambassador in Vienna. Mm. And he went to a meal there, a dinner one night. And he happened to sit next to the Times correspondent in Vienna. And they got on well, and uh, he had invited him back to his house at a later date, and they did go. And he was asking him, you know, what were his intentions? And he knew he had to give up teaching because uh -huh. of the deafness. It just wasn't working. So he said he intended to write. And so he went um, really on a, uh, to the Adriatic for a bit of rest and recreation. And then they, I don't know how to track him down, but I got a telegram to him asking him, would he do a report for the Times on an uprising in Romania. And, All right. and um, <laughs> what they said afterwards, the peasants, the peasants were in the bit obliging. They finished the uprising before he could get there. <laughs> <laughs> what they did, they did rise up again. So he did get a report out of it. But the first yeah. uprising was over by the time he got there. Like he travel to, yeah. would be slow back then. It wouldn't be yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. now. So, um, and that's how he got on. And they were happy with the report. And then they asked him to go to uh, Sofia and, and, and he was based there. But he was really their Balkans reporter. And yeah. like the Balkans uh, wouldn't include Russia and that, but they were all inter intertwined in, in that area for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how did he, how did he manage that to get so involved? You know, this fascinates me about him. Well, first off, um, you know, there were you know, somebody coming from this side of the world would have been unique enough yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because of the fact that he was writing and writing for serious newspapers, uh, obviously the, the kings and, and the head kings in Bulgaria at that time yeah. uh, wanted to meet with him and uh, other dignitaries did as well. So he got very much involved with all of these people. And the king back then was a Ferdinand and he was a great friend of his. And... Um, so he started writing and um, the reports, obviously, because he was getting to those people of influence were, 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 were well received. So, well, even if he was sending reports back, did they, the people over there, did they think he was English? Because obviously he wasn't sending his reports yeah, back. You, see, you, you, you must understand, this, he died in 1920. Yeah. So there was no Irish, really. There was, you were English if you came from this side of the world, uh, you know. Mm get that distinction and I don't know that necessarily he might have been making that distinction either you know but mm. uh, I don't know but, uh, yeah. but they wouldn't have made that distinction back in 1920 anyway yeah yeah but um, uh, but like he was writing the reports but how did he get so much influence was it through his friendship with, with Ferdinand? His friendship with all of the people out there uh, he, he became mm. Like there are photographs of him in peasant uniform. He traveled to all, around all the country. He had a, an assistant, an aide, who was from, uh, it's about 20 miles outside Sofia. And he traveled with him everywhere. And, mm. um, but they traveled uh, as in individual villages and towns and everywhere. They, he just didn't stick in Sofia speaking to mm. whoever, right? No, there, there were a raft of wars and insurrections and all going on there. I think Romania were involved in six wars in his lifetime. Mm. Mind-boggling, right? Mm -hmm. I think um, 
I'd say, I think 4% of the population were killed and 7% of the population injured. Now, if you think of the wars back then, they were pretty much all male. Yeah. Yeah. The towns weren't even being intact back in, 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 that, in that time. So that's 11% of the male population killed or injured. Yeah. Yeah. Mind boggling. Mm. Where is the book, man? I have the book there handy. If you're near you, hold it up. Because we're, we're talking about, she tell people, we're talking here to, to Martin O'Brien about a book that is written on, uh, on uh, James Boucher Hayes. James David, I should say. James David Boucher. James David Boucher. Hey, Boucher Hayes, I said. I'm thinking of, of, of our friend Pat, uh, Tom Boucher yeah. Hayes. But anyway, mm. uh, Boucher. Actually, where did they get the name Boucher, I wonder now? That, that's yeah. wonderful, Frank. But where's yeah. book, Martin? First of all, how much is it and where is it available? It's available uh, through PayPal. It's, uh, it's the basic price is twenty, but with post it's uh, twenty four. Uh, post and packaging to anywhere in Ireland or Northern Ireland. And how do they, how do people get it? Just go on PayPal and and, and, and pay or contact me through um, Martin Limerick at gmail dot com. Oh yeah, Martin Limerick. Oh, that's handy one. And uh, twenty. Well, how many pages I should have asked you as well? Uh, 220 pages, including a good few colour pages in it. Now, I was very lucky in that uh, when I started, um, I, I went to the embassy in Dublin and the ambassador uh, there, he was a man at that stage, it's a lady now, but he was very helpful. And also the ambassador in Sofia was very helpful. So I got very good introductions into the archives in Sofia. Yeah. And they were extremely helpful. And there's one guy, uh, Petko Mandachev, who wrote a book in Bulgarian about it. And he said he never got the information that I got from them. Yeah. Why? I do not know. Maybe it was because of the introductions. I, I'm mm -hmm. not really sure. But he said he never got it. And there's another uh, professor at the new Bulgarian university who has written an awful lot about Boucher. And he said he didn't get this information either. And did you have to translate it? I, 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 I cannot speak Bulgarian already, but I got people who did translate it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What language is in Bulgaria? Or they use or... a Cyril they have Bulgarian, but they, they, they have Cyrillic, but they yeah. gave the Cyrillic to the Russians. Oh, yeah. oh. Mm. So the, the, the ends are backwards, and if you were to, if you were to yeah, yeah. Well, hey, so if you look at the Russian language. If you look at the cover, my name is in Bulgarian on it here. Oh, God. That's in Bulgarian. Oh, lovely. I can see that now. I wouldn't, yeah. be, able, I wouldn't be able to pronounce that, I tell you. But getting back <laughs> into it, how did he... I mean, the night that Seamus Martin gave the talk, I was intrigued with the, the the things he got involved in. You know, well, he's buried first of all. He was giving out about his grave now. He said the grave, I don't think, was looked after very well. It wasn't. It, it, yeah. for, for, he, he was friends with Ferdinand, but Ferdinand had to leave. And uh, his son... Boris took over as king, but he honored the fact that they had agreed that he could be buried at, at Rila. Now, Rila is a monastery in the middle of the country, a most beautiful setting. There's nothing there except the monastery and on mountains and hills and valleys. Now, one of the hills near it is named Boucher, and a valley near it is named Boucher. And he picked the site for his grave. And who did? Who did? Boucher. Oh, yeah. With, with, with the consent of the king at that time, uh, Ferdinand, but the, his son honoured it later. But uh, it, it is a stunning sight. And um, it's just outside the wall. Now, the only people who are buried in Rila are kings and people of real, real eminence. You know, they're, 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 it's, it's, it's not a normal place that you would get buried. And um, he used to go there with Ferdinand. You know, the Ferdinand would go there for, I don't know, a month or whatever he would go for, and uh, they would go together. In fact, Ferdinand was the first uh, head of state to fly in a plane. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he was ahead of his time in many ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when did Fer when did Ferdinand leave or abdicate or whatever? Well, he had to. Have, you know, the, 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 the a lot of the people at that time they, with, with communism and that they had to go, and yeah. uh, the, the, the train that took him to the border, but. Um, the driver refused to cross the border and did they get a second driver out to take the train across. And where to where? From where? From where? He would, uh, I'd say he would have been going to Vienna around that area at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And Bar Barris took over then? Barris, it would have been easy. No, there was a gap, but Barris took over later. There was a gap yeah. because uh, uh, the, the Russians uh, took over those countries and they yeah. basically wanted to abolish monarchies. They didn't want yeah. anything to do with yeah, them. Yeah. And it was only yeah. in later years that uh, people started going back to the monarchy again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I think, is it the king of Romania? Is it his daughter or one of them anyway, living in London all the time? As far as yeah, I well, there would be. Uh, I, I, I remember working in SPS in Shannon and Ceausescu came on yeah. a visit and he did a tour of the factory and he had a whole lot of guys with him. And, and as with any dictator, they were all military guys with a lot of uniform mm. and all these medals. And um, the guys... Um, at the tea break, we're discussing all this, right? And one guy said, you see all the medals that guy had? He must have been the Lord of Wars. Another guy said, nah, I think that's a bulletproof vest. Yeah, yeah. It's too good. But at the time, Bulgaria, originally, when both would have been there, would that not have been controlled? Well, I know Ferdinand was separate. But what about the, the, the Ottoman Empire? Yeah, well, that's really how he got uh, popular there. Uh, the Ottomans did rule it. They, they were, you know, depending on what area you pick, uh, they were there since about the 1400s uh, and, yeah. and would control yeah. of all of it. And he got together the Balkan League of countries who um, formed a group together to fight. They all fought sporadically against them, but he wanted them to fight at the same time. And they did. He got them together. And he has actually been decorated by um, uh, Bulgaria, Montenegro, uh, Romania, and Greece. Mm -hmm. was decorated by all four. And why Greece now, for example? Why Greece? What's well, they were, they were on, uh, next to the Balkans there also. And uh, he, in fact, he was very friendly in Crete with uh, the, the guy who finally became prime minister of Greece. And um, he, he really helped them get going also. Yeah. It was the start of, of the moon, but he encouraged them to come together to fight because some of them had their own petty disputes with each other as mm. they were regionally, you know, and he got them yeah. together to, to fight. Because countries like Montenegro, they're on, they were under Yugoslavia, didn't run there afterwards. Most of them. Yeah, some of the countries that are there now were not really countries on their own. Like North yeah, Macedonia yeah. is a pretty recent country. It's only there in the last five, ten years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? They're all fractioned though. But some of them would have been the breakup of Yugoslavia, definitely. Oh, yeah, because Tito kept his, he kept his thumb and all in by, you know, when he was there. And of well, course he, he did, did, yeah. He but you really saw what happened afterwards. Eh? I mean, it, 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 it broke up in a terrible way. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Well, well, that's anywhere you have a dictatorship and it, it breaks up, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, end pretty, you know. Well, um, the dictators, happen. in a way, dictators, like they're, you know, they're terrible when you look back at them, but, but they, they hold. Factions together, but then when they, when they go, they go they are break up. yeah, you're yeah. the break. Did, 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 Sam, go ahead. did he ever come back to Ireland? Well, he did a couple of times, but I mean, essentially, he was living there, Tom, you know. So I know, I know that, yeah, 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 yeah. But he did come back, like his, his mother was from Castle Comer oh, uh, in Kilkenny. Uh, she was A H E R, A her, and she, she um, had a couple of um sisters and they, they left the house to him mm -hmm. so the house became his but he didn't get that until maybe 1919 or in 1918 1919 before he got the house. yeah it was a bit late no he had a bit of property in bulgaria but it wasn't big either yeah. so he had a couple of horses um no uh, a, a, a jay boucher owned a horse salamander who who um won the grand national mm. but, I can't figure out was it his father or himself. He would have only been about 17 at the time, which is possibly could have owned the horse, but it's either his father or himself owned the horse who, oh. won, who won the Grand National. Salamander was the horse. Where, where was he based? Whether it was his father or not, training the horse like or oh, the, He would have had a different trainer. They owned the horse. They bought him in Hartigan's. You know Hartigan's repository? In Cecil Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They bought him there, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that would have been probably like we kind of know it as a, a place where you put horses that were finished and broken yeah, up, right? Yeah. But probably at the start it wasn't. Yeah. And that's where they bought him anyway. Oh, a sales yard. Yeah. Yeah, it and, was. And was he trained in Bruff? I don't know. The trainer was a guy called Stud uh, who wasn't in Bruff, no. 
I'm yeah. not sure where he was based, but the, the horse um, had a, a defect and nobody believed he could win. And uh, they won um, a North, but they won the equivalent of a couple of million on him on the, yeah. on the bet yeah. Back, yeah. back in those days. Yeah. And they said that when he died, they all came down to dinner in black tie. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had done so much for them. Yeah, they owed him, they owed him that. Yeah. S T U D D was it was it was uh, the guy's name. And where yeah, was but, he based? Where was he based? I, I'm not story? sure, Tom. I'm not uh, sure. I just wondered, mm. like, you know. But get about why is he on so many? There's a, as you said, there's a hill called after him. There's a valley. There's the streets called after him. Is there, there are five streets in five cities in Bulgaria named after him. There's a metro station, and that was only named a few years ago. There's a place up in the Antarctic. There's a place called Smith Island up in the Antarctic. And they had a system in the Antarctic that if you mapped it, that means you'd send an expedition up there and you mapped out the area. You got naming rights as a little reward for doing that. But they got this, one of the places they mapped was a place called Smith Island. And one of the coves is called Boucher Cove. Why was that, I wonder? He was so he, he was so famous for them. Like he was so they were so they were so they, they were so grateful to him. I mean, basically, he was one of the main instigators of them getting freedom from the Ottomans. Yeah. So that was a big thing, right? Yeah. And he stayed with them as well because <laughs> after that war, where they basically got rid of the Ottomans, they weren't happy with who got what because they didn't agree it beforehand. So they went to war with the four neighboring countries. No, I mean, you can say about people fighting on two fronts ain't very clever, but fighting on four fronts is different. Yeah. <laughs> so they... they um, That's that one. But he, 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 um, he he's, uh, advocated for them after that as well. And also in World War I, he advocated for them because as a belligerent country, like themselves, Germany and whoever, were not allowed to the Paris Peace Conference. Yeah, yeah, so he yeah. went and he advocated on their behalf at that peace conference. It's so poor, like, isn't he? He had incredible, yeah, incredible, yeah. I felt really rich. I wonder what the locals think of him now. You know, he'll say the fact, like, the fact he only died in 1920. Like, there must be people in Bulgaria, in Bulgaria that are. Um, that, that met him, like, I'll come back, well, they mustn't be dead now, but, yeah. you know. Well, but the... he, he's so well known, like, there's a lady here in Ireland that was Bulgarian. I said to her one day that I'm looking into his history, and I said, do you know him? Know him? She said, we have to learn about him in school. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when I was, uh, in, I went to Bulgaria, I went to Sofia, and I also went to uh, other parts. But when I went to uh, Sofia, I, I spoke to the hotel reception. I said, look, I need to go to these places. Will you write out? where they are in, 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 in Bulgarian for me. So when I have a taxi driver, I won't be having to explain it. Because the difficulty is, you see, because they were ruled by Russia, they weren't, um, Russian was the second language that they were taught. Yeah. So a few of them would have learned English, but the bulk of them wouldn't have. So a lot of the older generation wouldn't know Russian. Maybe some of the younger guys now out there would, but you know, the old timers wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Unless you were well, very well educated. What was the furthest east he went? Boucher, how, how far did he, like, did he well, go he went, to Russia? He was in Russia. Oh, he was in Russia. Yeah, yeah. You see, the Russians helped uh, Bulgaria as well fight the Turks. Uh, mm. And uh, the, the, the big, um, in, 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 there's a big um, uh, church in Bulgaria and Sofia, and it is um, dedicated to the Russian soldiers who died fighting for them. Yeah. Because yeah. I know, and, and is it Bulgarian banknotes, there's, a, there's religious things on, on the lower notes, and some of them. Yeah, it, the uh, currency is called the lev. The le lev means lion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's a lev. But they're in the EU, Yeah. but uh, they're not in the euro. But their currency is pegged to the euro, so there's an exact um, amount of, of currency exchange to the euro. So it's fixed, <laughs> which makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there, weirdly enough, there was a cigarette packet named after him as I well. Him that. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Yeah, Martin spoke about that. But and, and they said oh. it, 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 for, it was an Academy Award for 
a reporter at that time that get a cigarette named after you. <laughs> They're all smoking <laughs> yeah. at the time. I remember Seamus Martin mentioning that now about the cigarettes. Uh, I, I have one. I got. I got. A, I got a packet. Did you want? <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And exactly. I have the stamps also. Yeah, the stamp. Well, you said there were three lots of stamps, is it? Three lots of stamps. It was a nine set, a four set, and a one set. Yeah. That's, it's fascinating, is. With nearly, nearly 17 million stamps yes. with Bolger on them. Not, not kind of a, a, a mix of different things, but just Bolger. Yeah, because we know of, I often wonder how, the, how, he got, how he and others got on with language, because with so many Irish, like the Lacy's, and all these people that left Ireland uh, after 1600, well, even before it, they left as well. The Browns. The foreign armies, you know, yeah. how did they manage, especially with the Russian yeah. army? Well, well the Lacy it was a young kid when he left originally, so yeah. uh, I don't know if he'd have that much education, but probably picked it up along the way. A lot of even the Russians they used a lot of French back in that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they might have got by with that because he had been in France for a while. Mm. No, to... to to rise to a field marshal in any army is a big deal, yeah. but to rise to a field marshal in a foreign army is a serious, yeah, yeah, serious yeah. business. Yeah, there must be because mm -hmm. there so many Irish that went, we never hear about you know, that mm -hmm. they never taught in school anyway. I tell you, and uh, yeah. and he found well, out the first, the reading. The first time I saw them was in Wardies of Torment, Tony, with, by Robert Hebert. You know, Hebert, the, yeah. the, the booklet, Wardies of Torment, like those people that I never heard of, you know, um, yeah, you know, down. Uh, the, the last Russian governess to the royal family was from Limerick as well, Margaret Eager. Yeah. She was uh, the governor of the, of the jail in Limerick's daughter. But yeah. she was governess to them. She she was gone before they were executed. Luckily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, we we, we, uh, we had an article like, in the autumn journal on Margaret Eager. That's quite good. But uh, there's lots of pictures of her uh, as well because... There's pictures taken of the children. She happened to be holding with them. The yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I, I like I said to you today. There's the stories that she got. She lost her job because of her limic, her limic accent. But I'm not too sure that's true. Well, you know. they said they didn't. They weren't happy with the accent because they wanted a British, or the you know the yeah. English fancy accent, and she wasn't giving yeah. them that. So I think that was yeah. part of it. But she also. Yeah. You know, there's a story uh, in, in Nicholas and Alexander about how they're, uh, uh, one day the children are running wild, like class are coming out of the bath, and there's, where's the governess? And she's inside talking to these guys about Dreyfus. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of minding yeah. the children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think she, they were afraid she had, she was listen, listening into conversations and not being, um, uh, I suppose, not keeping her mind, her thoughts to herself. Yes. They were afraid that she was taking stories out. I um, wonder which the three limerick actions did she have? The, I maintain there's three limerick actions. We have to find out and see which one she had. Has I don't think there's any. Huh? Has she the one above? Don't... I think the one that I have above me or below me. I wonder. You know. I'd say. So, I'd say the no, jail, so... you know, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I, 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 when I found out I got, that she was born in the jail, I, I, I got onto the prison service. And they yeah. say that the governor lived in the jail up to, I think, the 70s or 80s. Oh, I, I remember that. I, yeah. But I there was a, a birthday actually. party for one of their children. Yeah. And an IRA prisoner escaped during it. And from then on, no, no governors were, were allowed to live I mean, in the prison. I went to school with a fellow by the name of, uh, of uh, Cock, is it Crowley or Crowley? And he lived in there. And I remember going up after school and watching him go in. There's still a sign. If you go up to Limit Prison and look in by the side of Jerry O'Dee's pub there, there's a, a sign over, well, now it's all blocked up, the governor's house, it says on it. Yeah. That's still there. You know, there's mm -hmm. a, in there he went, he was Crowley. I'm talking about now in the 60s. And his father obviously must have been the governor. You know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I never yeah. looked into But he lived in there. But geez, we're, we're drifting away from Boucher. But that were the Irish people, first of all, they went away to... Um, Foreign lands, they had to go because I see now they want to go and dig up Sarsfield, whether there be anything left of it or not in the story for another day. <laughs> you know? But I was saying, well, you also had, like Australians are familiar with Sir Richard Burke, uh, you know, the yeah. governor. Of... Funny, isn't it? Yeah, Sir Richard Burke was that about Martin, who was governor of, of uh, New South Wales, as it was at the time, uh, from, from a hand outside. Yeah. And, uh, people know nothing about him here. 
Never but you say all, all, the, all the original Irish that went to Australia were handpicked by British judges. Well, Burke did a fair bit now. Yeah. Burke wasn't, uh, Burke was in league with, uh, what's his name, Tom, below in York Place, down in uh, Spring. Uh, Spring Monty Eagle. Monty And yeah. he was kind of, not so much in league with him, but he did, he was very fair. He wanted the Irish, uh, uh, Spring Rice, make sure who was going out, kind of. And, and he made sure they got work when they were out there. Okay. And he wanted equal rights for some of the Irish. And of course, the British government at the time wasn't hearing of it. And uh, he also said the Aborigine should have been better looked after. But of course, he resigned his post. He did in 1826 and came home and finished mm. his days outside in uh, outside in Tornfields, you know. that. And like, there's very little known about him here. We mentioned that, whereas in Australia, the old says straight away, the man, the man that founded um, uh, Melbourne, he designed Melbourne okay. with him, right? Mm. The street layout lay is very same as Limerick, you know, with intersecting Names. angles. Street layout. Name the street. Named the street of uh, named the street after his wife. He did. did he? Okay. After yeah. Delvin after his wife, and after uh, spring, there's one after mm. there's one after Monte Eagle Spring Rice. You know that, yeah. and Collins, of course, he was he named all the streets after his own Irish people. But like that, uh, talking about you, I'd never. It's only I, I said at the beginning of the program. I heard this interview one night with Seamus Martin. I'd never heard the Seamus Martin that a lot of people have from reading the Irish Times. Uh, it sounds very kind of upmarket for me, very big words in it. But Seamus Martin was, was a reporter for, uh, for the Times in Russia and that general area. And uh, when I had him tell about his boat, should have been from Limerick, I'd never heard of him. You know, because when he came down then to give the talk, on voucher and the cigarette that I remember him talking about and all the places he was associated with. You know, it was a fun, fun investment. But there must be some connection. The Bouchers must have married, married into the Hayes family because there, you know, there are Boucher Hayes in West Limerick. Yeah, so yeah must... but I think the spelling is a bit different, Tom. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, but like, I, I, that... I, it got corrupted over the years, probably. Ah, yeah, that, that happens. But, yeah. but the, their coat of arms has uh, four water bouquets, like they're, they're leather pouches for water. And they got those from the Crusades. Um, they were in Jerusalem, and they went. They lost, they lost control of the, of the water, and they had to go out to get water. So Boucher went out, and he brought the water back in these pouches, and that became their coat of arms from then on. But that's why their coat of arms has these four little water pouches on them. Yeah. But uh, as the most, and he must have been something to the, the Boucher that got the land outside in Lachor. Because it's you know it's a really coincidence to want to be now to have a name like that you know and that's not to be related to the original. Oh, well, I'm sure they're related in some way, but he's, he's not a direct relation. Yeah. yeah, he was George Boucher, the fellow that got the land out there. I know yeah. that much, you know. But like they were must have been related somewhere. But I mean, like, how did he manage to travel and take such on himself? You know, to go to these foreign countries at the time after teaching, we said teaching at Eton. And uh, well, I mean, fascinating, really, that he when he decided to go there, that he didn't come back to Ireland and kind of live. Well, up he, he, your travel back then was not easy. Like you, you had to do a, a long distance journey. Like either you went by boat or, or you went by train, and even the trains weren't all intact at that time. There were sections missing. You know that that uh, section into Istanbul was was missing until very you know very late on. So there were there were sections of the rail missing, but I presume they had ways of getting through. Yeah, you'd wonder, like, wouldn't you, Tom, about travel? I wouldn't say I was I that comfortable. Tom Donovan has gone off. Tom Donovan has gone off. Um, gone off audio. Put back your audio button, Tam Donovan. I can't hear you. It's like it's like sign it's like sign language here. Can't hear you. Put on the button. How was that? How did he go off? I don't think I knocked you off anywhere. You knocked yourself off. But if you don't, I'd have to learn sign language and I'll be able to tell him, you know, what's wrong. You can't hear him anyway, you know. Anyway, but like Okay, I, I just put, there's one thing here that this is the program for his funeral, okay? And I just read it because it's, I, I would not remember this on my own. The procession order was the mayor on horseback, the corporations, the delegations, the decorations, there would be the awards that he'd got, uh, the cross, the banners, the choir, the clergy, the funeral chariot, um, the ambassador of England, the representative of his majesty, the king, 
gentlemen ministers, speaker of the National Assembly, representatives of the press, foreign ministers, heads of sub supreme state institutions, commander of the military units, Sophia Municipal City Council, Academy of Sciences and the University Academic uh, Council, cultural societies, garrison of officials and officers, reserve officers, fans of the deceased, young students, primary school, high school students, military school. <laughs> <laughs> and he was living in, in his state for um, uh, three, three days yeah. before he, in Sofia, before he was brought to um, uh, be buried at Rila. You wouldn't want to be bringing that crowd back to the hotel, would you? No. <laughs> so we're saying we just... <laughs> oh, God. God. But it's, it shows the popularity that, you know, that he had. And there's the respect for him they had really more than anything else. Oh, yeah. Well, what he did for them was incredible, you know, in that he basically was the instigator of them getting their freedom from... Uh, the Ottoman <laughs> Empire. Well, from the Russians or from the Turks? Well, the Ottoman, the Turks, yeah. The, the Russians would have helped them. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But then the Russians took them over. <laughs> after well, yeah, the, yeah, they, yeah, but, you know, that, that, the, the Russians uh, didn't go back after the war. They stayed yeah. where they were. <laughs> they kind of hung around. Think, yeah. you know, it was such a good system, it all fell apart in, in a couple of days, you know? Yeah. But the thing, I, I, know, I was in Latvia and I noticed... But the rail, the rail system in Latvia all led into Russia. There was no, there was no rail system to Europe. Like if you want to get a train, oh yeah, from Latvia, yeah, yeah. If you want to get a train from Latvia to somewhere in the area, somewhere, yeah, you couldn't. Any, any, well, and I never, but if you want to go to Paris or Munich, there's no train line. You know, no all, way, yeah, you have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good way but to say Just going back to the book, Martin. Yes. Uh, how did you like? How did you put it together? Did you do his well, early life? In, well, what I did, life? Was, you know, when you start out, you're, you're starting without all of the information that you're going yeah. to have at the finish. So what I did was I, I set out uh, what would, I thought would basically be the chapters in it. And then I started collating information about all of those as much as I could get. Then I got my hands on a lot of the books that were published about him. And I have about mm. 25 books here. Uh, mm. Not all 100% about him, but, you know, that yeah. have a good part about him. And I collected all of those. And I did a lot of the online articles. And then I worked with um, three people mainly in Bulgaria. One was uh, the head of the state archives. And the other guy was with the uh, new Bulgarian university. He even published a newspaper about Boucher. Um, oh, no, back in 1990 or so. And, <laughs> What do you mean by newspaper? You know the way in Ireland you used to have a special, you know the the Times or the yeah, 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 would have yeah. a special special about yeah. whatever, the, the, the Civil War, the War of Independence or whatever. Yeah. But this was about voucher only, nothing else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And did he have any diaries? Yeah, yeah, obviously he was a reporter, so he had, but they have not turned up. They, they went to his nephew, a guy called Claude, but nobody has seen them since. Mm. And people are not even 100% sure that Claude got them, if you know yeah. what I mean. They were left to Claude. Mm. But, you know, nobody has seen them since. Um, and did, and who, who did he correspond with? I mean, apart from Ferdinand and Boris. Well, well he spoke to the, the whole raft of people that he was in, in Tovid out there, mm. and all of the, uh, you know, all the government officials, uh, oh, and mm. in Greece and other places. And... Um, and what about home? Did he correspond home? I, 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 well, I haven't seen any correspondence home, but, but what, there wasn't a home, as in uh, Bagasown, they were gone from that by about the um, uh, 1920s, I suppose. But there was only one brother there who he was in contact with. Mm. But that, that was... But did, he, that was did, he, did he write to the Aher family in um, Wexford or... Well, there was like a, if, yeah, there, there was Kenny. There, there were there was correspondence with them, but um, I, I've been in contact with the lady who's living in the house now, but they haven't seen any paperwork there. No, oh, somebody told Kikini. me that oh, Kassel 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 yeah, someone, yeah. someone told me that um, in in Baggettstown that um, somebody came one time and uh, you know the nieces and nephews of whoever had it. And they just threw out everything that was there. Now that's the story I heard. It yeah. might be wrong. It might be not. I I mm -hmm. do not know. 
Mm-hmm. That was the way it was back then as well. People would throw yeah. out stuff they wouldn't they wouldn't realize the importance no. of it. No, no, it's no. Still, yeah. no. It is yeah. true. It's still happening unfortunately. Yes, yeah. 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 People yeah. just discard stuff and they don't realize what they have, you know. And I, like he never got married. Was he? Did he have any close friends, like apart from acquaintances? You went to he acquaintances. never got married. You know, the reports say he, he was gay, but uh, mm. you know, I, I don't know. But he did, certainly did not get married. No. Well, you have uh, loads of people like Kitchener. Anyone who didn't marry, the suspicion is automatically nowadays. Well, yeah, mm. yeah and like, okay. uh, like you know, even down to Cliff Richard, people just because he get, he's not married, yeah, yeah, they automatically presume. But it's it can be unfair. Like that, like I, I I knew I grew up with men who never married and had no, you know, just didn't happen for them or whatever. It doesn't mean they're gay, like you know. So yeah, yeah but then lots uh, of men and women didn't marry for whatever yeah. reason, you know. They just yeah, just, yeah. yeah. maybe I mean, it wasn't for them. I don't know. His, his vocation is probably his profession, you know. He just yeah. wanted to. I'm just yeah. hold up the book again. And we'll talk, just hold up the book again, Peter. We wonder what we're talking about. If somebody shows it. We're talking. To, I'm talking to Martin O'Brien here with Tom Donovan, and we're talking about this book on James David Boucher, Boucher, and uh, he was a, a Limerick man. That's kind of the best way to put it is he done well, uh, travelled all over the the, the, the far, not the and the the far east, but the Balkans mainly. Uh, mainly and uh, he's renowned in Bulgaria. The book uh, is is uh, twenty euros, isn't it? Twenty. Uh, Twenty four, including, including post and packaging. 24 and 2 and 4. So if anybody, anybody get you can get in touch with me anyway if they want to find out. Uh, you can you can you can email you at Martin Martin Limerick. What's that? The the back back? That's him d- d- dancing in the Russian East. It's one of the most famous paintings in Bulgaria yeah. and it's in the National Museum. But that's him dancing it. Is so, that with a pair of tights in him? Is it? Yeah, yeah, but he, he dressed in that in national costume all the time. But I was in um, a restaurant in Nessa Bar. It's on the on the coast, and they had a painting, a copy of the painting on the wall, and I was looking at it. And the lady who owned the restaurant said, uh, "Are you I, have you an interest in that painting?" I said, "Yeah, I'm starting to write a book about him." And about a half an hour later, she arrived down at the table with the painting wrapped up, and gave it to me. <laughs> the Bulgarians are nice people. Yeah, yeah. The language is a problem, obviously, you know, because some yeah. of them. Don't have the language, but they are nice people, very yeah. friendly mm. people. Yeah, because I think Tom, we know men. The real is in Bulgaria. His, I think we know men yeah. in Bulgaria. See, I think it's Bulgaria. His anyway. Mm. Yeah, let that fly stick to the yeah, wall. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you'd be. Okay, there'll be someone write the book. What's that, Tom? There'll be someone write the book about. Yeah, there'll be somebody write the book about him someday as well. Oh, yeah, I wonder. <laughs> uh, tell me, did you meet me? Did you meet anybody from Ireland in Bulgaria? Not really, no. Um, because where I was wouldn't have been uh, in what you would call pure touristy uh, setup. Yeah. You know, when I was yeah. like, if you, the, the, the state archives are in the old uh, KGB building where they used to torture people one time. Oh, uh, yeah. What yeah. a beautiful building. The, the, the view from it is spectacular. Yeah, they're all real Russian, Russian architecture, isn't this? Yeah, but they, they still have some of their own. Like, uh, we, you know, we, we in Ireland don't have good architecture in a lot of places. You know, a lot, a lot of our towns don't look that well, but yeah. they have nice, nice towns, nice architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it's fascinating now, it is. And I'm sure people, if they see this program, they'll be wondering about it. I should tell you again, get back again, I keep forgetting to say it. Uh, my name is Tony Brown. And I have with me uh, Tom Donovan and Martin O'Brien talking about this book on, on Boucher. Uh, we're on, if you want to get in touch with us and you want to see these programmes, you will see them, well, now you'll see them on the Limerick Historical Society website, but they're also on YouTube. Or if you put in Learmedia.tv, put in Learmedia into, into, into YouTube, and you'll, see, you'll be able to get a link on to, to, to find where they are. And lots of other programs too put out by Live Media, I should say. Press our subscribe button. It's down in the bottom uh, right hand corner of the screen. Just pressing that as a subscriber. You're not charged, isn't something that's got to, you're going to get a bill for. It's free. It's just to find out how many people are watching the programs and listening in, if you can do that. And Martin's book is available if you, you can get in touch with him through martinlimerick at gmail.com. 
uh, or if anybody's interested to get in touch with me, and I'll, I'll put you in touch with Martin. I have I, I have emailed all the members, Tony, with the flyer and. Um, oh yeah, with the flyer. Yeah. You're going up on our website and on Facebook as well. So just. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's that's great, yeah. lads. Thank you. Yeah. Because Martin, when I first saw when I first saw the book, and you, you, I said, "Who's he?" I said to myself, "You know, where's this? We'll have to get the idea for this book because uh, I didn't know about it that was coming out." That, you know? That's my second book. That was the first book. You were at the launch of that. Do you remember the? Kilmory. I do, Kilmory, I do. Yeah, I do. yeah. I forgot about that now. The book in Kilmory. If people again are wondering where, where's Kilmory, it is out. And uh, I suppose really for Limerick people, it's behind the behind the whole. It's the easiest way of putting it. It's an old, um, an old Church of Ireland building that's no longer used, which was one of yeah. the. It was really the parish church of basically all around uh, what people call Castle Castletry now, because Castletry mm. covers about eight townlands. Which have been forgotten yeah. about, and uh, yeah, they, they used to have lectures there. Um, come back maybe. Oh, Tom, Tom Dooley did. Oh, we book about yeah. it. I lecture there. I gave yeah. one myself there. God, it's a long time ago now. It's I did too. Anyway. I said, I still got. I still didn't get paid for it, Mister. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, Tony must have got it after buying a castle. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I know a man that, said, that lived around there and he said they were not Philistines, that they weren't, they weren't supporting anything, you know. But anyway, but Tom Toomey tried to get a historical society going out there. Was, I like that as well. It wasn't supported, you know, which is a pity for mm -hmm. such a big area. But they were using the church and I was used It's a kind of a community centre. There was a time <laughs> that they wanted to move that church down yeah. to um, down to to, to the well. well, yeah. But uh, good in the sense that it was made, especially the tower was made of rubble. And if it did try to move it, the whole thing would have just basically went into dust. You know? But all, yeah. all the windows were plain glass as well, and they had been broken, and yeah. it was going into disrepair. But that kind but, of galvanized people to raise funds, and they did, and they got forced to do the work, yeah. and they got local people to put in stained glass windows. And uh, they got the parish priest in Mona Lane funded up for one because they said to him, your church is after funding one already and it's not going to look good if, you're not, if you don't fund one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. But uh, it's a lovely little church and it's well yeah. documented now. It's mentioned a lot in old history things, the old parish mm. of Kilbury and Derry Galvin, and, uh, which it was. The, uh, but, but like that now, when you go out over, over the Grooley Bridge, they call it Liberty Castle, try the whole way. It's yeah. like, it's like uh, uh, Plessy. Like, in actual fact, there's no such place as Plessy. You know, it's, mm. a, it's the townland of, um, of Drum, Drum Row. And uh, people mm. forget that even, that uh, Plessy is an Indian word, which you forget about. You think it was Irish. Right, yeah. A man told mm. me one day, it was on Plessy or something, I think he called it. I said, you're joking me. It's an Indian word. That's a hero mm. which people forget about. Again, that's something we're never told about. At the university, it doesn't plug itself enough as to why it's called called Plassey and explain yeah. the meaning of Plassey. But that's, that's a story for another day. It's a battle know? in India and Plassey, yeah. Oh, yeah, Clyde. About, about 20 miles north of Calcutta, you know, and mm. the date is in, on the 27th of June, 1756. Uh, it's embedded in my brain, you know, <laughs> the mm. battle of Plassey, which is something for another program. We talk about Clive of India. But, but, uh, um, did, come, I, I, I know it's a stupid question, but how, how did he die in 1920? He seemed to have a bit of like pneumonia and a few things like that. Uh, mm. he, he, he was ill when he got back there. And what he, what age was he? He, he, he never bought, sorry? What age was he? 70. He was 1850, uh, 1920. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he, he, um, he was kind of ill when he got there, and he, he, he lived in a hotel room mm. all the time he was there. He never bought a property or a house of any kind. And, um, no, he did wander around the country and stayed in different places, but uh, he was living in a hotel room, and he, he arrived uh, back with a guy called Hurd, H-E-R-D. He was a British military Attache, and um, so he left him at the hotel, and then the, the, the next day they found him dead. Yeah, yeah. There, there isn't anything but, suspicious about his death, you know. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and how did he make his living? Was it just as a correspondent? As a correspondent, he yeah. He, he wrote for a lot of magazines, and um, yeah. I, 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 there must have been paying good bucks for him, right? Because yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there's a funny story. There was an actor uh, in England called Boucher, and one of the rival newspapers wanted him to write reports. They said, you don't have to write any reports. Just put your name to it. Yeah. And it would be Boucher <laughs> reporting on the Balkans, but he wouldn't yeah. agree to it. But uh, yeah. they, they wanted him to, to write the opposite reports to, to what James David was writing. Yeah, his yeah, name was yeah. Boucher also. Yeah, yeah. Because there were a few families in Limerick about you, and they were related to both the families in Limerick were related. Yeah, I think a lot of the families in Limerick were, were um, C-H-E-R, I think they were, B-O-W-C-H-E-R, yeah. Yeah, you, you wonder, like, it's, I, I, would, I would maintain the same name, you know, that's what we were saying. Well, I'm sure it was, yeah, but you know, the way some of them were changed over there, like Smith and Smite and all that, you yeah, know, a lot yeah, of names yeah. were changed over. Yeah. And then you get people at times, I know I've come across people on a name, they're just trying to be different with the spelling yeah. of the name, you know. I've come across so many now, and I'd say, do you not put in a, a Y or a K? And I'd say, well, I just decided, you know, I know people, I can think of one man this minute now who dropped uh, the D from his name, you know, and you'd wonder, like, you know, why people do these things, you know. Mm. Anyway, look at Tom Donovan, so there, he should be out on the bench, shouldn't he? You know? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go there now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the row? He'll, he'll resign from his good paid job here. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 um, anyway, after he, after he, after he died, like, the, 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 he, he was lying in state for three days. Yes. And, and you have and the funeral. They had a procession up to the, the monastery, Sophia Monastery, yeah. and they, he yeah. got finally buried there. Now, yeah. the tomb is uh, outside the monastery, there's a little hill. The main gate into the monastery, it's to the left of that. And you, you can see it in the book, you know, the passage way up to it. And um, the state paid for his tomb at that time. But it's not yeah. a very elaborate one. No, yeah. there was talks. And in fact, the, the guy in charge of um, the monastery, the abbot there, he was going to do it as well. But it didn't get done. So what? I don't know why. Yeah. What, guess what, the renovation what, what, of the of, of, uh, of oh, yeah. headstone and, and the area around it. Yeah. Even the sign is a bit weather worn there. The sign is in obviously Bulgarian, but I had a translation in my book for what it says. Yeah, yeah amazing, just an amazing man. He was, you know, to travel so far and become so prominent in a far off country like, and there's very little on him. In, uh, in, I've never, I've well, you, see, never you, you see, he didn't do much in Ireland, Tony. That's the yeah. main reason. What he did yeah. was in the Balkans, and um, so and it, and it finished in 1920. Mm. So we, we really wouldn't have had much um, history wise on him at that point. Yeah, as wondered, well as that, was troubling times here. Yeah, you'd wonder you know, what I he thought of, of that, how the country was going here. Then he yeah. comes up to the shooting of the Archduke you know, in Sarajevo, what he would have thought of that. And even now, what he would have thought of the countries doing their own mm. thing, like Kosovo and uh, Bosnia and all these countries, you know, yeah. what he would have thought of that. You know, that, mm. that, that, did he ever think that that would happen, I wonder? Well, you know, it was always a powder keg out there for whatever reason, you know, there was a lot of activity there. I mean, like I said, there were six wars involving Bulgaria in his lifetime. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not counting not, other things going on in other countries nearby, also. Not to mention what happened there in the in recent times in the Balkan Wars, like it's just yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, what would you have thought of all that? You know, well, religion mm. is, I mean, Bulgaria is mainly is it orthodox? Is it? It, it mainly, yeah. Yeah, you see. So, mm. and then you probably have a sprinkling of Muslim, and have a sprinkling of Catholicism as well. Yeah, you would, yeah, but but like uh, there wouldn't be that many. Yeah. Um, mm. You see, they were ruled by the Ottomans for a long time, you know, so some of the religions kind of, um, I wouldn't say they disappeared, but they went below ground, like what happened in China and other places, you know, yeah. they weren't yeah. as open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And some places went totally Muslim. Yeah. Mm. And was he, was he a brother or a bishop? Was he religious himself? Not that I've seen. I haven't seen anything that said yeah. that he was still religious. Uh, no yeah. was the answer there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the Brothers Church of Ireland? Church of England. Well, it would have all been Church of Ireland, yeah. He's a fascinating man, you know. I never we're coming up to nearly an hour in the other, anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. a fascinating book now, Mark, to be honest with you, you know. Yeah. 
I was just thinking, Martin. You know, it's a bit. It's late now, but you could have put a, you could put a, you could have put a plus on the price of the book and done up the grave. You know, like the stand. <laughs> That's a great idea, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, first of all, we will finish up anyway. And uh, Martin, first of all, anyway, fair play to you for doing the book. And it, it's been yeah. something to light that a lot of people wouldn't know about, you know, and I hope people will buy the book, you know, and we'll well, tell it as best we can. So do yeah. I. <laughs> yeah, but I believe you apart from that, just that to joking. let people know, because as yeah. I said, I guarantee you, if you were to go out in the streets and ask, have you ever heard of him, you know, the, the, the only one would, would be Frankie Boucher that I heard about her. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 but his name is up there, me. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, about your hairs. I probably think it's about your hairs we're talking about, you know. Yeah. Nothing about him, you know. But, yeah. but, but for, for what he accomplished, like, it's incredible. I mean, yeah. he'll be decorated by four countries and have 16 mm. million stamps issued for you, you know, and all those places named after you. Well, I don't know of any other person in Irish history that has all of that. Yeah, was there, any, <laughs> was there ever a documentary done of him at all? No, there was not, no. Uh, Amazing it's, it's, another, it's another reason to buy the book. There's so little, people know so little about him. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think Martin is brave to bring out a book in, as we say, the current climate, as, you know, know, with COVID. Uh, it's easy. Yeah. It's not easy to sell books, but I mean, the Same more promotion. Yeah, I had a Woods book as well now on the Quakers, you know, trying yeah. to sell a book. It's no joke, you know, I tried to sell mm. a book, especially like if you had a launch of that. And you could tell people, and you were going to, to yeah, you, you, you'd move a lot in the middle of the launch, yeah, you yeah. Would. You would, but it's, it's very difficult when you carry you've no outlet really for the books, you know. And you can't even travel with it, you know. That's no. why I went with uh, the post and packaging thing because it's yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, easy to do. It's not, yeah. not open either, you know. So, yeah. you know, so anyway, Martin, first of all, anyway, we thank you for coming on and talking about the book. And uh, Tom will Tom will do more than me as regards pushing it, you know. We tell you, even if a percentage of our members bought it himself to be something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you for tonight, and and uh, thank, and you're doing a great job. So keep it up. Oh yeah, we're trying anyway. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. in local history is is kind of it's an interest. I want you, as you know, now after writing the book, when you get your teeth into into history, you do you do nothing else. As well, well his, history is a nice place to visit, but not to live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. yeah. <laughs> It was out of that though, you know, will you be remembered, you know, you'd wonder, because actually, don't have to come to my mind now, maybe good now to change, uh, Bedford Road Limerick is one that intrigues me, right, it's called after the Duke of Bedford, who did nothing, absolutely nothing for Limerick, no, right, would it be nice to change it, it'd be easy to do, to call it Boucher, Boucher Row, wouldn't it? That would be a nice idea, yeah. It should sound even much like it, you know. The only thing is, you have to agree on a spelling for it. That's the only thing, you know, because Bedford is easy. But Bedford, and you've lower Bedford Row, which is down the side of the Franciscan Church. Yeah. And it's a complete waste, you know, that uh, was Bedford Row, to me, is a ridiculous name. Because, uh, again, he was only allowed lieutenant, and the Duke of Bedford, he did nothing for Limerick. Absolutely. But we haven't changed many street names in any recent times. You know, we've only had some of the new streets, I think, that... The new street is that Shrod and Kjol, isn't it? The one that they broke through yeah. there from yeah. Upper Wheel Street, yeah. That's because of the, 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 the band. band. The, the, the yeah. Nathalie Hall, you see, St. John's Band, and the one down Sherry's of Canada. But like that, I'd say most people probably just refer to it as Atlantic Street, Sherry's of Canada, mm. which is the yeah. street from the traffic lights over. Over yeah. towards uh, the new bridge there, the Kemi Bridge, you know, the one going on to the Dublin Road there. Yeah, well, that has no English name on it as well, and Shrodna Keol hasn't either. You know, there no. are two mm. streets with just pure Irish names only. But Shrodna Keol, there's, there's no houses in it, you see. It's kind of handy in one sense, you know. Yeah. But you can see it on the wall. We have a pack to the Saturday you can see yeah. Shrodna Keol, you know. And at least they, they, they drove... Well, that was a brand new street, as you know. Oh, they broke, they broke, some, uh, broke in through. After four, they went through the Bend, the bend Hall. They yeah. just knocked it down. And you forget about the Bend Hall being there now. At this stage, you would. Since yeah. the never of the new uh, the new courthouse. Anyway, Martin, to thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and, pleasure. Uh, and to ta now, Martin, this is where the best laugh comes in. I try to put you. I try to put, knock in everyone off. I find it difficult to move this little mouse. Good night, Tony. Martin. Good luck to Tom. Okay. Thanks very Goodbye. much. Great okay. Time. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.